So we left off at this part in the last video where we just added in a boolean cut into the foot. So what I want to do here is a cool little trick. Basically, if we go to the Ngon cut and turn off cyclic, we briefly covered this before. If we cut up this way, we can press the T key and run a solidify modifier. So with this in mind, what we could actually do is just kind of go up and down like this and cut straight from the boolean cut which is going to give us if we press enter this type of design something that I think is pretty cool in mechanical designs maybe uh, if any of you have more you know industrial engineering experience or something of the sort uh, there, there's a certain name for these I'm not too sure if I'm honest but it is something I love adding into my designs now you're gonna notice that sometimes the boolean cuts just cause artifacts so what I tend to do is just find a good location for all these cuts, a good even cutter point, and just try to move it around until the artifacts are gone. So let's go ahead and press Q and run a mod scroll and recall this guy. And all we really need to do is hop into the side view and just move this around and kind of see if we can find a better location. The main reason these artifacts are occurring is uh, simply because around the circular area we have a lot of edges so uh, most of the time on these types of designs I end up having to go destructive and clean it manually so just try to find a good even point before we have to do that it looks like most of these problems are stemming from the the bottom area so we might be out of luck here so what I think I'll do is just leave it here we'll go ahead and hide the cutter and I don't really think there's going to be a way to go around it. We're probably going to have to go destructive and clean this up manually. So before we go destructive, let's make a duplicate of these feet because I'm still kind of iffy on this design. And if I'm ever even slightly iffy, I just make a backup. So I'm going to press Shift D, duplicate this piece, and then we'll move it with the M key to the backup collection. Let's just make sure it's turned off. Both of these guys are turned off. We don't need to see them. Okay, so now what we're going to do is select this guy, this should be the last one in the scene, and we're going to run a smart apply. And I'm just going to turn off the bevel because it's going to be easier to see. We're probably going to have a lot of near miss verts we need to clean up, especially up here in the corners. So it shouldn't really be a big deal, just a little bit of manual labor. So if the view is bothering you and the bevel is just going crazy, you can simply turn off the bevel modifier and you'll be able to identify where some of the points of stress are. By turning that off but I'm just gonna leave it on because I just think it's easier to identify the issues that way so for this first edge we could either dissolve it out or simply double tap G and slide it outside of the realm of the bevel a bit that's what I'm gonna go for this is actually a really good exercise for bullying cleanup I would suggest you try this on your own if you can we're gonna go ahead and dissolve that edge out there you need to pay careful attention especially to the areas where the edges get pretty close to each other. Those can be big points of conflict. This boolean actually did pretty well. Usually they're a lot worse in my experience, but it looks like we did okay. This vertex right here, let's just merge it down to that one. Never mind, let's not do that. That looks like it uh, had a problem with that, so we'll just leave it where it is and maybe we could dissolve it. Maybe not. Yeah, some of these edges are are holding the boolean together and they can't be dissolved, so some of them we simply have to leave, which is no big deal. Let's try merging this one, see if it goes crazy. Looks like this one did okay. And by the way, sometimes these shadows get in the way and I mistake them for artifacts when it's actually a shadow. So sometimes when I do this type of thing, I just turn off the shadow temporarily until it fixes itself. Let's merge this vertex down like that. This one we could probably dissolve, see if that does anything. Yeah, we'll just dissolve that out. There's a weird issue going on down here. Looks like this edge is pulling all the way across. Can we just dissolve this one out? Okay, it looks like we can. It looks like this one is somehow part of the boolean. So what I'm going to do is simply join up these verts here, dissolve out this edge, and we're just going to kind of work backwards almost to slowly clean things up. People tend to complicate this process when in reality it's just kind of experimenting and seeing what works. It's very basic, uh, very basic hard surface techniques really and you're gonna see that 
that's the case as we do this more. So let's drag that one down. You can already see this is a lot cleaner. Can we dissolve this yet? Try dissolving this edge. Not quite. So instead of what I'll do is run a knife cut if we go into the side view here. If I press K, I can run a knife cut down here. Now to keep the knife cut straight, you just press the C key, click and press enter. Let's see what that did. Okay, let's see if we can dissolve this out now. There we go. And you're gonna notice that even though there's a big end gone here and down here or whatever, it doesn't matter because on flat surfaces, hardened normals removes the shading completely. And you know, I get these comments all the time and it's, um, and, and I don't react negatively or anything at all because I once had the same questions, so I always have patience and answer them. Uh, I get people saying all the time, questioning, you know, why do you have this edge sitting here, or what about this massive end gone, or this and that. And the fact of the matter is, everything in these models have a purpose, especially in the topology. If I have random edges sitting here that I don't really need, I'm probably going to dissolve them out. So most of what I have sitting here has a purpose. This edge's purpose is to hold together the boolean because booleans have to have connection points to the main part of the mesh for it to work. So I mean, I, I can't dissolve this edge out. This is holding the boolean together. So it's everything has a purpose really. And sometimes the purpose is to one, in this case, hold the boolean together and two, clean up the shading. Remember what we did just a few minutes ago, we had that really long and ugly edge that was causing us problems. And with just a few clicks and joins, we got something that's a lot more clean and elegant in terms of topology. So yeah, don't let anyone go around or put you down or say, oh, this is wrong, well, you shouldn't have that, you shouldn't have n-gons here. And it's, it's simply silly behavior at this point because n-gons have their use for everything, just like quads have their use for everything. There's no universal rule to how topology needs to work. In hard surface concept renders, we use n-gons and booleans all the time. And as long as you clean it up and make it work well, you're going to be good to go. So hopefully that kind of removes some stress around booleans and n-gons and whatnot. That's kind of the point of this course as well, of, as well is to um, kind of ease some of your nerves. So let's go ahead and clean up up here. This is a really long edge that we don't want, but it's holding together the boolean. So we need to join these up instead. So if, if, we're, if we want to remove an edge that's holding together a boolean, we just need to move the connections to a better location. So Blender will now allow us to dissolve that out. So you can see that we just transferred the holding edge to another location that's a little bit more elegant. Let's go up here and take a look at this. So this is stemming from the fact that this face right here, these edges are just too close to each other. So what's happening is the bevel is overlapping because there's not enough room. So we're going to either have to move some of these edges back, so maybe we select that interior edge and just move it back a bit if we want, or we could just drop the bevel a little. Just depends if you want to compromise for less of a bevel or if you just simply want to move the edge. I'm just going to drop the bevel a tad bit because it was just a very, very slight adjustment. If it was to the point where I had to make it almost non-existent, I would have just went ahead and moved the edge, but in this case we can just go ahead and reduce the bevel a tad. Let's go over here and take a look at this. So this edge is just too close. Let's dissolve it out. Up here, I don't like this edge. It's not really causing any problems right now, but let's just make it more elegant. Let's join this up and then dissolve this one out. Just looks way better that way. And just to keep things consistent, we don't have to join this one up here by any means, but just um, it's kind of satisfying almost just to see things that are kind of evenly flowing. So I'm gonna leave that there. So this was a good example of topology cleanup and getting bevels to work properly. So let's go ahead and go back into object mode and see if we missed anything because knowing me, I'll probably end up missing something and then someone will point it out. Hey, you missed, you missed an artifact there. So let's make sure that's not the case. Everything looks okay. Just take your time, look around, you know, don't, don't be lazy. Make sure you get every single crevice and corner checked because that can be the difference between a clean render and a render that just kind of says I I took the lazy way out. So I think everything's good here. I checked every nook and cranny, so that looks all right to me. And since the other side is symmetrical, we should be good. 
but I do notice, interestingly enough, there is an artifact here. You know what? Um, no, the side is not good because we didn't symmetrize it yet. So my mistake, we actually need to symmetrize to the side here. So let's just press Alt X and make sure we're under symmetry and symmetrize on that end there. You're going to notice the mirror goes away, which, you know, I didn't really want to happen. So what we're just going to do is after symmetrizing, we're just going to re-mirror it. So shift click on the base of the robot, Alt X again, and make sure this time instead of symmetry, we're using a mirror modifier. So we'll just mirror that to the other side and we're back to where we were before. So already we haven't really even touched too many secondary details, maybe some here and there, but these are still the primary details and this thing's already looking good for just a uh, primary detailed robot, if, if that's the, <laughs> the right phrasing of the sentence, but you get the point. Once we start adding in secondary details, this thing is really going to pop, and then once we get into more deep details like the tertiary ones, this thing is just going to look absolutely amazing. Most of the time my tertiary details are in the form of decals, so once we get to working with the decal machine later on in the course and getting this thing detailed, it's just going to be loads of fun. Decaling is one of my favorite processes in hard surface just because it's easy and therapeutic. So yeah, we're just going to continue on with the foot here. I think we did a good job down here. So if you ever need to make any changes, you of course have your backup foot, but I'm hoping we don't have to do that. That would be annoying. So I had an idea for the foot here. Maybe we could add in some mechanical toes or something. Just a uh, thought. So maybe we could go in here and just double click, do a cut here, a cut here, and then maybe like a bigger cut over here. I don't know, just a thought. I think it looks kind of interesting, kind of gives it more of a, a human form to it, if anything. Plus it still looks pretty mechanical. Now this is all non-destructive, so we can always go back and remove these if we want, but I'm just going to leave them there for now just as an idea. Now I'd like to hop into the side view here and run another N-Gon cut. And with this N-Gon cut, I'm going to make sure Cyclic is turned off, so that way we can have a, 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 a thick cutter here. So we can just go up and maybe make some sort of cut like this. We'll press Enter. Kind of get a design like that. Now that was actually a bad location to cut it. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe we just need a thinner Boolean here. Let's try going to Solidify and just dropping the thickness a bit. That looks better to me. And then just as a final design, I want to go in here and make this piece a little bit more exciting. So in the side view, I'm just going to run a difference boolean on the side. So we'll make sure we're in circle mode with 64 verts. Sometimes it resets after restarting Blender, so just make sure it's at something higher than 32, or it'll look a little bit jaggedy. We'll hold control, make sure snap's turned on, and hold control. And of course, just drag out, maybe a little bit wider than that and then just pull it in ever so slightly. That looks good, and then if we just recall that cutter, we can shift click this piece and just mirror it, Alt X and mirror to the other end here. We'll get rid of that. We'll just press H to hide it. There we go, looks pretty awesome. And by the way, if you wanna hide the cutters collection, since we added a backup collection, this is now the second collection in the stack and the cutters is the third. So you actually have to press shift three now because it's the third one in there to hide the cutters just in one click. So just wanted to mention that in case you got confused. So I think we'll stop work on the foot for the time being. We did a pretty good job here. Just want to point out that this foot looks pretty complex just on the surface, but hopefully by now you realize that complexity doesn't necessarily indicate complexity. It just looks difficult. In reality, all we did was just use a simple few boolean and slice operations, clean things up, and we got ourselves a pretty cool looking foot here. So hopefully, you know, at this point in the course, even though we're not near the end, hopefully at this point you have a little bit of a, of a more approachable attitude towards these types of designs because they're really not too difficult once you get the hang of it.